What if the end of the world was at your door? Both young French-Canadian filmmakers answered the question with a successful post-apocalyptic web series called Time Out. Produced independently and launched in 2009, the first season of Time Out got noticed by its high quality of production and script. It caught the attention of Radio Canada, the French branch of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. On the verge of launching its on-demand website called 2.TV, Radio Canada acquired the rights for Season 1 and set out to finance Season 2 and 3. The story is simple. On September 13, 2013, a cataclysm of unknown origin hits Montreal and plunges North America back to the Dark Ages. Communications shut down, hopes of rescue seem close to none, and it never stops snowing since. The events are seen through the eyes and drawings of Joel, who struggles to survive as he searches for other survivors in this frozen world. Il y a 179 jours, euh, j'ai quitté Montréal avec Max pour fuir le, fuir le cataclysme. On voulait rejoindre nos familles dans le nord à Rouen, mais on s'est jamais rendu. As each season is more ambitious than the last, it was also important for the creators to make each chapter of the story unique. Season 1 follows Joel as he survives alone in a remote house. Season 2 takes a road movie approach in which our hero wanders the snowbound landscape with friends in search of other survivors. In the third and last season, he finally finds people isolated from the world who manage to recreate a small society with its own rules. Ici, on n'est pas... Euh... Pas une gang de réfugiés ou des survivants, on est une communauté. J'insiste sur ce mot-là parce qu'il est très important. Il vient avec deux autres mots aussi sécurité, responsabilité. Vous donnez à la communauté, la communauté vous donne un retour. Qu'est-ce que vous êtes prêt à apporter à la communauté? A community united behind its leader, Philip, a strong-willed character who seems at first to be the best chief society has to offer, but human nature doesn't take long to take over. Communauté, hein? Responsabilité. Sécurité. Sécurité. C'est une sécurité, ça va ensemble! Risks were high and the number of challenges for this low budget project was gigantic, but the producers were ready to make the impossible possible. Shutter completely transforms Key Lodge in northern Quebec. The stranded cast and crew learn to live together in proximity during several weeks. Using two Canon 7D cameras, the small team managed to make the best of the weather, getting authorizations to shoot on a closed bridge in construction to mimic a cataclysm of epic proportions. They also managed to recreate a heavy snowstorm in studio and turn a school auditorium into an abandoned refugees camp. For the series finale, a 30-minute special was offered to fans as opposed to the regular 10-minute installments. More than 200 special effect shots were created in merely three weeks. The team managed to recreate a snowbound landscape of highways and deserted cities. All the visual effects were done at home on over-the-counter software available to the versatile filmmakers like writer-director Eric Piccoli, who drew most of the matte paintings required. Over 500 special effect shots are included in the series and most of them barely noticeable. Innovating with a financial structure and common to Canadian filmmaking, the producers created a multi-platform project. Launching it at first as a 13-episode web series, they followed by a special feature film edition planned for a theatrical release. This format will also be sold to TV as it was done with season 2 on specialized channel RTV and on video on demand. A recut version of five-minute episodes of the series will be sold as a TV program complement on specialized television. And finally, a DVD box set and official music soundtrack were made exclusively for the fans at Montreal's Comic Con in September 2012 and ended up being sold out. Social media played an important role in creating an online community of devoted fans. Using Facebook and Twitter to connect with the growing fan base, the creators presented exclusive behind the scenes footage, interviews, pictures, comic books, and more. They brought the viewers' experience to a new level as fans were invited to give their opinion on the plot, what they would do in that situation, or which character they related to the most. These questions created some ethical and social debates within the community of fans, exchanging among themselves and directly with the creators. The answers were generous and became a fan habit as the quick replies of the creators became a trademark of the series. Time Out was truly in the hands of the fans. And the community lives on. New fans are discovering the project and are joining in. 
older fans keep sending words of encouragement. They share their pride as the series continues to gather recognition for the hard work of the creators with each sale, official selection, nomination, and prize acquired, both locally and internationally. Time Out is a great example of leveraging all the tools at one's disposal in the digital age of indie filmmaking. Producing an entire three-season transmedia experience from script to web and from Joel's comic book to the TV screen on the budget equivalent of one episode of the Walking Dead series. Time Out is a collective and fresh approach to a new media age where digital dreams can come true. And what if the winter never stops? What would you do if the end of the world was at your door?